Happy Wednesday, folks. Good morning. We have a special treat for you today. I we know. Are, we are going to do a crossover episode. I know. We're so excited. Just like Chicago Fire <laughs> and Chicago PD, <laughs> we're going to the Raymond's Round Table and Vegging Out with Kay are going to merge. That's right. I know. We've come together. Now, who would be fire and who would be PD in this? I don't know. I'm in the fire, the fire <laughs> mode. But I do like to be a detective, so. <laughs> you are a very good detective. So All hopefully right. we don't take the two hours that... They normally make for those episodes. So. I don't know. We got a lot to talk about right, today. We're, we're so let's excited. Let's get going. We're going to talk about seeds. Well, can we show off our little buddy oh, first? That's right. I, we found something at the garden center today. We got to show you. If you have a weak stomach, yeah, turn away. So this is, and Faye found it and about passed out, y'all. All right, Harvey's going to come in. Check out this slug, everybody. This is the giant red slug called Arian Rufus. Isn't he cool? He's actually not. We know that they love to eat plants. And this is an introduced species here in America. It's found more in Europe. And this guy can actually be um, a negative influence on our native slugs that can mess with their habitat. So, not sure what we're going to do with him. We've been hanging out with him all day, showing him off. He looks like he's eating some orange mums. He's got a little bit of an orange tint, to him, or maybe on the pumpkin. Uh, yeah, well, and it, they, it did say that their color can be um, derived by what they eat. But, oh, it looks like he's looking at you, Harvey. He does. Checking it out. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> does he have his air hole open? I know. So we did discover. Can you see his air hole? I saw it. Right in here, you will see a hole called a pneumostomy and that is actually his breathing hole i did not know that we did some interesting research on slugs much to everybody's dismay oh there it opens can you see mm -hmm. it and that's super cool kind of like a blow hole of a it is hole like a blow hole. hole of a whale that's right all right so there you go now you can look back everybody if you have a weak stomach we'll put him i'll take him somewhere after work and dispose of him <laughs> Right with the hammerheads. Oh. The hammerhead worms. The hammerhead worms. We love to get rid of them. All right. All right. Now, Brenda, what are we going to talk about today? Let's do some seeding. Let's do some seeding. Now is the time to think about starting to save seeds, if you guys like to do that. Um, so I was going to go over a couple of things for the garden you can save. And then Brenda's going to show um, some of the perennials and things like that that mm -hmm. she saves and other things that she does with a <coughs> spray paint. Um, so one of the ones that you can be saving now, if you have tomatoes left, are your tomatoes. Now I happen to have some of our cherry tomatoes. You want to pick tomatoes that are ripe, healthy, you want the plant to look good. And I know that's hard for us with our late blight, um, but that'll help for the seed to be a stronger plant. Now seeds come in three different varieties. You've got self-pollinating, heirloom, and hybrids. A self-pollinating means it's pollinated by insect, wind, animals, humans, um, and those are good for the garden. That sustains the diversity of your crop. Heirloom seeds are seeds that have been passed down from generation to generation to generation. Um, that doesn't necessarily, not all open pollinated seeds are heirloom. And then a hybrid seed is a seed that humans actually control the pollination of so that they can have a better end product or what they think may be a better end product. So hybrid seeds, you can't, if you replant them, you may or may not get the same thing what you would Or if they get. seed in the garden. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, so we're gonna talk about tomatoes. Now, with tomatoes and all of your crops, you do need to think about how far apart they are. So if you grow a lot of different tomatoes, sometimes they'll cross the flower it does not lend itself very well to cross-pollination. It is more in, uh, pollinated by insects. So that's a good one to try. So I'm going to show you how to do it. And Harvey, you may want to come over. So I've got my tomatoes. Now this also, I'm in the gross mode today. This is kind of like the slug. So you're going to cut your tomato, and you're going to squeeze out the seeds and the pulp, okay? And we're not going to keep that edge. And I'm just going to show you a couple. You're going to squeeze that into a little cup, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to put water in here, and you're going to let this mold and get slimy and ferment. Isn't that interesting? But you have to do that 
so that it will eat that seed coat. Tomatoes have a very gelatinous, uh-oh, I got some sludge in there, hold on. Tomatoes have a very gelatinous seed coat on them, and so you want them to ferment and mold for that to be kind of eaten away. So what we'll do now is we're gonna put this somewhere warm and dark in our uh, kitchen, like the top of the refrigerator. By the way, you guys, if you ever come over to my house, <laughs> don't just pick up something and eat and drink it. You never know <laughs> what I've got in my home. But we're gonna let this sit probably about mm, four or five days, depends. A white, slimy film is gonna build up on top of it, Brenda. It's quite delicious. I, I can just see people putting it on the refrigerator, forgetting about it, and then like uh, six they, months later when they decide they need to dust the top or need that need that extra no, plate, that, you know. That's well, I'm gonna tell there. you, hardcore seed savers are very interesting people. So once that sludge forms, then you're gonna pour off the top. The seeds will be left at the bottom. You're gonna rinse them. I put them in a colander, a little mesh colander, and kind of scrape them off. Cheesecloth. Cheesecloth, and then put them on a paper towel to dry, okay? And then what you wanna do is store them in a nice container, put them in the refrigerator, label them, or you will never remember what you have. I actually will label my little jars when I'm doing seeds. Um, so that's how you can do tomatoes. You need to make sure they're really dry before you cover that up. Yes, right? exactly. Because if you cover them up when they're wet, they'll mold and then they won't be viable the next year. Mm -hmm. So another one you can do is okra. Now this is not how I would normally dry okra. I just want to give you a quick example. Okra needs to be about a quarter mile away from any other okra to make sure that you're going to get a true species. So if your neighbor's growing okra, you might not want to save your own seed. You really want to be about a half a mile away. Really? Yeah, because think about it. The okra flower is really big and pretty. It's in the hibiscus family. So bees will come for miles around, and as they go, they've been touching everybody else. Ooh. Who needs to go to the doctors before they get... <laughs> and then they come to your okra. So... Uh, <laughs> So what I would normally do is let the okra dry on the stalk and then I would crack it open and collect the seeds. And I'm just gonna show you real quick again, Harvey. What happens though if they cross pollinate? What does it? So this is Clemson spineless and you won't get a true Clemson spineless. Okay. You may get a Clemson cross with a burgundy and you'll see, and I cut some of these, but you see there's hundreds of seeds. You really only need to save a pot or two to save your seed from okra. Okay, so that's a fun one to save if you're a beginning seed saver. Don't be putting that in mind. No. The next time you come by and throw it along there. I'm going to throw okra out on your roadside, Brandon, <laughs> just because you don't like it. Okay, one other trick I do for lettuces, coriander, dill, fennel, you can collect these seeds and replant next year. And so my trick is a paper bag. So I let the seed head, the lettuce will bolt. We've talked about that before, mm -hmm. where it blooms. You don't want that because it makes the lettuce bitter. But if you want the seeds, let them go to see a uh, bloom. The bloom will be yellow. And then as it dies, it'll get a little white puff on it. That's when I clip it and I will stick it down. I'm pretending this is lettuce. I will stick it down into a little paper bag and I put a clothespin on it to keep it up from the surface, and then I'll write on it exactly what that is, and then as it dries, I can shake it and the seeds will fall to the bottom of the bag, and then I don't have all that chaff and stuff in there to try to separate. Lettuce seeds are pretty small. Lettuce, coriander, which is actually cilantro that goes to bloom. So let some of your cilantro go to bloom and get the coriander seeds, because that's de uh, delicious and pickles and things like that. And then remember at my house, you know, I love my zinnias. So I just let my zinnias dry until they're absolutely crispy. And then I cut them down and put them in the compost pile. And when I do that, all the seeds just fall back into the garden. And so they come back up every year. I don't cover them up. They're cold hardy. They like that cold to germinate. And so that's how I do it. If you wanted to save zinnia seeds, do the same thing and, you know, plant them somewhere else besides wherever they fall. 
do the same thing right on their zinnia. Now, Brenda asked a good question earlier. You may not get the same color that you planted, but that's okay. I like those. Oh, they're zinnias. beautiful. Um, and so you can do that with marigolds, what we say, cleome. Oh, cleomes um, have some good seeds. They're cleome, easy. They'll yep. spread like crazy. They have good seeds. So this is also a fun thing, again, if you're home with your kids and you've got flowers, go out and collect seeds. You can sort them. You can size them. They're different colors, shapes. Um, so it's, seed saving is really fun. And it's important for us as gardeners because it does promote diversity. Right, and get the kids started young. I mean, now's the perfect time when they've been that's, home. I mean, get yes. them learning something educational that they can use. That's right, gardening is a lifelong learning lesson for all of us, you know? I mean, hey, I'm 21, you're 30, and we're still <laughs> learning. <laughs> okay, so that's my dig on seed saving. All right, Brenda, what do you have? Well, I got a little bit of everything here. I thought I'd first start off with what, can you, what self seeds in your garden. What can you throw seeds out right now um, instead of just deadheading and throwing them in the compost pile? Um, what you can, if you want some stuff to spread or you want to take it to a different garden bed, some really easy things to do. And one of them that is all over in my garden, is that one that's still blooming a little, is the blue, the native blue labelia. Oh, yeah. I have tons of this, tons Whoa. and tons. And if anybody wants any of these seeds, <laughs> let me know. Just put a comment in our in the Facebook post that we um, do and just say, hey, I want some blue labelia seeds. I'll get you a bag of them. This is how you would do it. And it's the same way if you had foxglove. I have lots of foxgloves. I've already seeded yeah, them. they'll spread. And they like it cold. They need to go, a lot of these things need to go through a cold winter to bloom the following season. But um, foxgloves will spread nicely. I have them all over different parts of my garden. I just spread them around. But all you have to do is once they're dry, just kind of rake your hand down like this and then just throw them wherever <laughs> you want them. So, it's like, and they it's will like come up everywhere. They'll even come up in a gravel driveway if you want. They do like moisture, so if you a little bit this year, yeah. that they're going to be everywhere next year. I they, can tell. Or along ditches and things like that. They're really I've pulled up a ton of them and given them to people. And oh. even if you are interested in some of the seeds, I did have some white ones come up this year. Some red. Ooh. I have a lot of the red, native red ones too. So, you know, it'll be a jackpot of what color of plant you get next year. Right. If you get some seeds for me. The uh, next one um, that's really easy to do is Leatris and the goldfinches and the chickadees will help you do that. Um, help you spread this. This will be little. You have to just know that it's not a weed when it comes up in the spring. It's a little bubblette. Oh, and it's nice. a little grassy texture. But all these in here are going to be seeds, and your finches will be all over them. This is Leatris, and you can just, oh, yeah. um, I go backwards this way, and so you have a million seeds, and you can just throw them. Oh, <laughs> and there you go. I'm going to have seeds in my hair, Brenda. You're going to have to make me wash. But you can now, see they're the starting seeds. to go, right? You can yep. see that it's starting to go right now. Yep. Um, it's going to seed right here. And that's what the finches and the chickadees love right now. They would be all over that. Mm. And I have a lot of these, too. Nice. Um, okay. They spread nicely. Okay. Right. And then another thing um, we have here is the... This, oh, I love this, this one. This Baptisia. didn't take my ride right, this, but this is the, um, my, it's got a little bumpy in my car, but this is a Baptiza, yes. right? and this is like the cobalt blue flower in the spring, and it has some wonderful pods that are just, they're ripe right now, they're ready, they're starting to open on their own and spread, and so okay. that's a Baptiza seed, and it will come up, Yes. and the one thing about Baptiza, make sure you put it where you want it because they are very hard to move. They have a tap root and it's yeah. almost impossible to move. They do. I realize that when I try yeah, to move. It's really, really tough to move. Yeah, so better to start that one from seed than try to move it. Right. Just make sure you get that seed where you want it. Yep. Oh. So this is the butterfly weed. Love this This is the orange one. one. And my seed pods are opening and you can see some seeds in there. Can I take here. some home mm -hmm. with me? Certainly. My, and I have, I think I started with two plants, and I probably have about ten of them now. Mm. But this is the butterfly weed that got the pods, so don't just cut the pods off. Let them, you know, they'll open on their own and spread by the wind if you want, or you can um, put them where you'd like. Just remember, because sometimes when they first come up in the spring, they kind of look like a weed. Yeah. You know, so right. if you can... If you can identify them, mark them. Right. It helps a lot. And I just, I love how seeds spread. I mean, this little packet of goodness... And it can yeah. be, you know, when they stick to you, like the beggar lice, and seeds are just fascinating. Great design. Yeah. Another one is the uh, agastache, the hyssop. If anybody has blue fortune, that's the one that I know has seeds a lot. Okay. Uh, I'm not too sure about the black adder. Okay. Uh, do you know about that? Mm -mm, that's the one we've been growing. Right. And the reason we quit growing blue fortune is because it was coming up all underneath our um, oh, benches, really? uh, benches and stuff. <laughs> 
So it does seed, and I used to plant that, and it do, it'll come up everywhere, um, which is nice because it's a great plant. Right. Um, it blooms a long time. The finches love it. The butterflies, the hummingbirds, the bees. But this um, also has some seed heads to it, so you can just kind of spread these around, and you'll see there's some seeds in there too. So this is a nice one. It has that licorice smell. All right. It gets about three feet tall, most of them. Awesome. And then a lot of them, you know, there's the black bag Susans, the Heliopsis, mm -hmm. which is a really tall one, false sunflower. Yep. And this is a cone flower, the Echinacea. And you can see how the, I love leaving these in my garden and just coming up at night and seeing how like some of the seeds heads have been um, oh. eaten during the day or the finchers are flying away from it. But these are all little seed heads that the finchers will spread for you or you can spread on the ground um, if you want more. Yep. Mm -hmm. And this is a very tall plant that does a great job spreading. Yes. Very sturdy, too. I've had pretty it really good luck is. with this That's sturdy. a nice stem. And that one gets probably four to five feet tall. Yeah. Right in my garden. Yeah, it's nice for a backdrop of a garden. We're going to have a nice little crop back here, Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just be our wildflower garden That's next right. year. And the one that, um, this is the, the Siberian iris. Yep. And, and, oh, and these are beautiful in fall arrangements. Look at that sweet little... Little seed, uh, head. seed head, and then I'll. Let me well, it you just put it. You can see. Oh, you just spring. I mean, look at that. Look There's at There's a million seeds. seeds in these, and if you don't want this, because this will spread, and if you don't want it in your garden, you need to cut it after it's done flowering. You need to cut it down before it gets to that seed head, before it dries. Well, look how pretty it is, even when you oh, open it. Oh, it's beautiful. It up. Yeah, those are nice. Skunk yeah. seeds. So lots of seeds there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's see how lucky you get. In the spring. All right. And another one is. Oh, my favorite. Love this. This one is the blackberry lily, oh. candy lily. Um, so this is a really delicate, small little orange flower, usually with a little freckle face in the mm -hmm. center. It's sometimes called the freckle face lily. Likes it dry. It's very tall. All right. Uh, does need to be staked usually. And the flower is just, the flower is cute, but it's not a big showy flower. Right. But after the flower is done, you do not want to deadhead it because it forms this beautiful big pod. I should have brought one in. But it's a huge pod that swells and it has... A clusters of blackberries in it all right and those blackberries will stay on there through in an arrangement they won't fall off unless you pick them off all right and this will seed also so you can take these off and you can sprinkle the seeds around and you will get more blackberry lilies. yeah so a lot of you know not another nice way to do this is that you you have containers that you don't use in the winter time and it has dirt in you could throw some of these oh, in your container then wait for them to come up in the spring because they'll be coming up before you plant your annuals again yeah that's uh, a great so that idea. way you can see your success and you can plant them where you want to yeah i love that idea on. i'm even thinking how fun for christmas to make little seed packets on your own you know and give out to your friends okay hey, well <laughs> Somebody has too much time on their hands because that's a lot of collecting. All right, here's a, Don't worry, I don't need any. If you're thinking of me. Uh, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to sneak up to your house and get my Christmas shopping done early. That's right. Yeah. All right, so the next one is balloon flower. I have a lot of these. these I have a neat. lot of the tall ones. I have uh, white ones, and I have the, the blue ones, the periwinkle blue. Uh, they have great seed heads. The nice thing about a balloon flower, too, is don't cut it down too early because it gets a beautiful golden fall foliage. Yes. Very, very nice very fall pretty. foliage. So these are starting to dry and popping a little bit, but this one is completely dry. So you can open this up. Oops. And you can see the little seeds in this. There's oh, a couple yeah. in there. Yeah. All right. Oh, there you go. There they Jackpot. are. Yep. So just sprinkle them around and you will get the balloon flower. Yep. So you have to kind of know what the when it's coming up, what the flower looks like, so you're not um, trying to pull it up thinking it's a weed. Right. You know. All right. And so another one, and I think I mentioned this before in another one of our previous Raymond's Roundtable about spreading some native plants that I found when I first, that one got it, first moved up to our house. And one of them was a Joe Pie weed. It was beautiful. It was on my roadside bank, so I just kind of snipped them off, and then I just went, Woo! and I had all through my garden, and I have a million of them. So, I, and they're hard to. But it's pretty. Though. Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, they get really tall, um, so they're and they're pretty hard to dig up. So I've tried to give them to other people. What what I want to show you is this is one that was on the roadside. Wow! Look at that. Actually, this one was in my garden. Wow! This was in my garden. This was on the roadside. What I did 
is in the springtime or late spring, early summer, I went and I trimmed it back twice. Oh, you were telling us about that. So and this is what happened? So I trimmed it back twice and this is the flower. It became wow. lots of flowers, but much shorter than this. So this was all along my roadside bank and they stayed nice and short, They didn't, which was on a slope, so they didn't tip over or break or get heavy by the rain and the wind and stuff. Right. But this thing is a humongous. It's, it's gorgeous. It was at least six feet tall. Wow, that is gorgeous. But you can spread it. You can even see the little seed heads on here right now. Yeah. I'm talking about, so. yeah. so make sure you put it where you want it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Another one to be careful of is the roadside aster. All right. When this becomes seed heads, you, I sprinkled this around and have this in my garden too <laughs> but boy i bet the pollinators oh they do i mean especially especially um since i started working at raymond's and i'm never home to pull weeds or right. flowers or <laughs> trim back anything or deadhead anything they're just I'm actually thinking about cultivating weeds brenda oh, well i got some, i can i can help you out there i'll give you some wheat seeds all right so that's an aster and then there was one more and I'm going to give some of these, I'm going to donate some of these to the Flat Rock Playhouse. This is the native hydrangea. Mm. And oh the way you can tell a native one is the underside is white, mm. sort of a silvery white. It's a lace cap. Uh, it's kind of a short of a flat lace cap. It's not yeah. really puffy. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of flat. Yeah. And this likes moisture. And which, what I did was I got the seed heads, sprinkled them around, and... I have a lot of them too. So I do have some of them come up. I even have one of them coming up in my boulder wall that have kind of formed into an espalier oh, where I've cool. trimmed it back so it's not out on the driveway right. so it's sort of flat and, and kept it that way. And it's just coming up in the middle of a, a little bit of a dirt. Um, That's and amazing. The roots, and the roots are huge. I can't pull it out. So Wow. Um, so I love this one because when you're hiking in the woods and the wind's blowing and you get that white, you know, pop, it just it's right, so and pretty. Right, easy way to identify it and yep. stuff. Yep. So I have a lot of this. If anybody wants any of this, let me know. I can get you a, <laughs> I can get you a couple of that. The um, Then the one other thing was, I think I got most of that covered. What I wanted to show you, oh, another plant, too, that I have a lot of in my oh, garden. Oh, me too. Good is this Holy a native flocks. flocks? Is this a native It one? must be. Yeah. So this is a native flocks. Yeah. Lots of seed heads. All right. And they will spread on their own. And when they turn brown like that, a little darker brown, that's when the seed head will open up. And, ooh, they're pretty hard. They're cracking a walnut. Cracking a knife. Oh, it's in they there. sound like a squirrel over there. <laughs> but these will spread because I have yes. them all over. Oh, me too. And they're beautiful. Uh, and they're still blooming now, actually. Yep. And it's this color, flower. Yep. Isn't that pretty? They do get powdery mildew on them. Yep. Um, but they're very, very tall. And the butterflies love oh, them. Oh, they love them. Yeah, so pretty. And the other thing, I just wanted to show you really quick um, what you can do, and then I'll go over the hosta one in a Okay. Minute. So this is some of the things that I just showed you, and I spray painted. Surprise! Brenda spray painted but something. But I've used some of them. In arrangements, you know, like these little bald cypress cones, you can put in little arrangements if you do oh, no, isn't that little neat? mossy arrangement, that type of thing. And if you have a cluster of them where you just kind of stick them in for a little bit of color, this is an astilbe, this is the phlox, we have the um, the Siberian iris, we have some little bit of uh, rutabecchias, blackberry lilies. That's really neat spray painted. I yeah. never would have thought of that. Cone flowers. And there's a, more of a subtle orange that I didn't have on me so I just this is a little brighter orange but there's more of a subtle one in a maize color this is the agastache have you ever used the flower the floral tint that just kind of tints the flowers no. instead of covering I'll have to get you some no, of I'm just going down the old the old paint aisle <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I haven't been to that floral store yet you talk about I <laughs> know uh, we'll have to get you some. and another one that I find interesting is the uh, plethora so I'm just showing you this in case you like to do any of this or add a little bit of punch or even do like a dried flower arrangement without all this spray paint. Before you cut things down, think about it. This is a really cool turtle head. Oh yeah, that looks good painted, doesn't it? I mean, and just sticking that, even if you have an outdoor arrangement, yeah. you know, because this will last and stuff without a problem that you need a little pop of color to break up some greenery and stuff. Yep. So that's that. And then, of course, Christmas time, we do a lot of more of this. Mm -hmm. So this you know that is oh cake. that's uh is that uh, the balloon flower yes look how gorgeous it almost looks like rose hips yeah i did oh. my rose hips i couldn't get to i only had a oh few i them, love so. that okay and then this is a still be a yep. cluster of these in a yes. in a white base are oh, beautiful yes and then also i did the siberian iris yep. which is good and the 
echinacea, the coneflower. Oh yeah, look at then that. Then I painted a few white, that's the um, agastache. And this is a clethro that I've liked to use before. Oh, nice. And one of my favorites of using is a, oh, the silver painted. That is fabulous. Oh my gosh, in a so, wreath? Right, oh. and, I mean you can do all these and once you, so now's the time to kind of go out there and pick them. Yep because they're still holding their seed heads. And once you spray paint them, it gets them, it almost like seals them. So, yeah, I mean, this would last in, you know, till yeah, next year if you want to. by Christmas too. time, it's too late to oh, harvest right. these. So Even you, another month, it'll be too yeah. late. So, so you need to harvest the them. Oh. But this in a white, um, a white base is beautiful. I a cluster bet, of them yeah. is really, really nice. Very nice. And then also, once again, the bald cypress that we're sitting under, standing under here, I paint those white. They look like little snowballs. Mm -hmm. But once again, on a wreath, you know, oh, if you're gorgeous. trying to do something natural, yeah, um, pine cones, something like this, or even outside on a tree on your deck, you know, just you doing something natural, put some yes. hydrangeas in there. That's a great idea. Right. The one last thing is some of you have pastas, and I did share a link of this on. Um, there. So this, the hot, a lot of hostas are going to seed now. This is your seed head. The hummingbirds are done with them. Yep. So what you can do once they're green like this, you can cut them open. And then you're going to see these little black seeds. You have that harv. All right. All right. So all those are seeds in there. And what you can do is you can let them drop on the ground. All right. Let them drop on the ground or you can save them, dry them, put them in a paper bag like Kay was showing you. Keep them in the refrigerator. And then you can pot them up. Mm -hmm. Start a seed tray going um, right after New Year's probably. Yep. Get the seeds going in a little seed tray. The one thing with the hostas is that when it comes from, when they come from seed, they won't come back as a true plant. True, like the parent, right. right. A lot of them might be a solid green or a different color. But that's the way you're going to get a lot of interesting ones, too. It depends on what was pollinating that's with them. That's what promotes diversity. Right. Yeah. You might get some striped ones or mm -hmm. some variegated ones. So well, and even less, you can cross-pollinate. And so you will take pollen from one flower and pop it into another flower. And a lot of people will do that with like a paintbrush. And then you'll want to mark that seed, you know, that flower head. So you know that's the one you messed with. And then collect those and see what happens. Again, that's a great experiment for children as well. Right. The um, I think that's a great idea. I mean, because that's there's a, so much out there that I don't know that is just fascinating. And I wish I knew, had another 40 years of my life that I could go back I know. and start studying and some start of those. Studying I know, because there's just so know. much. Every, and that's what's fascinating. I mean, I was in the golf business, and I loved it because you always are learning. You know, there's always mm -hmm. something to learn. Even by teaching people, you learn different ways to uh, communicate with them and different ideas that work and drills and stuff. And the same thing with gardening. Right. I mean, there's so much to learn and different ways to do oh, things. And, yes. And it's just a fascinating... Um, it's a fascinating uh, science to study and a passion. And, yes, yeah, a lifelong experience, like I said. So seed saving is a great way to start. Great way to play in the garden, um, so we highly recommend it. All right, if you have any questions, let us know, and if there's any seeds you're interested in, let me know, because we're going to Brenda's house. I'm, I think I'm off Sunday, and uh -oh. I, I can harvest some for you. Nice, okay. Are you really going to be off, Brenda? Yeah. Okay, we'll see. All right. We always take bets when Brenda says she's off. Well, I'm off today. <laughs> I know, and see where you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we really appreciate you watching us yes. and following us. If you have any questions, let us know. We'll be back. Uh, Friday. Friday morning with our new job for five, and boy, have we got exciting news for you on Friday, don't we, Brenda? We certainly do. Okay, so we'll we... see you then. Bye. Bye.